Hey all my people out there in internet land, it's Sky from Arthritis to Athlete here, and today we're talking about only the most epic of clashes between two diets. That's right, we're talking about the keto crazies versus the vegan daisies. Huh? Eh? See what I did there? <laughs> I'm sorry for my stupid humor. <laughs> what a way to open up the video. So yeah, we're talking about this new randomized control trial comparing a high-fat animal-based diet, basically a keto diet, versus a low-fat plant-based diet, which was essentially a vegan diet. Who will arise victorious, and who will fall in crushing defeat? Okay, uh, I just need to stop. <laughs> Let's just roll the intro. <laughs> Let's just start with the basics. You're probably familiar with people who promote a ketogenic diet saying something along the lines of eating any amount of dietary carbohydrate spikes your insulin levels and insulin is like your fat storage hormone. Thus, we should lower our carbohydrates in order to lose weight most effectively. Whereas plant-based proponents generally think in terms of calorie density. So we're eating a lot of foods like fruits and vegetables, whole grains and legumes, which are comparatively a lot lower in calorie density. Basically, you can eat a lot Lot of those things and you don't get a ton of calories and that's why it makes it easy to lose weight and while these things probably aren't always totally black and white that's really what these researchers wanted to test and boy did they test it this is probably one of the best studies comparing a higher fat animal based diet to a lower fat plant based diet here's why they didn't do what a lot of nutrition research is really guilty of doing which is comparing a subpar diet to another subpar diet for example maybe comparing a diet that's 40% fat to a diet that's 25% fat and then maybe labeling this one high fat and this one low fat like I guess that kind of works but in what world is 25% of your calories coming from fat actually a low fat diet I think you know where I'm going with this instead they sought out to compare exemplary diets so really really good examples of either diet on each side so we're talking about a keto diet with less than 10% of calories coming from carbohydrates and a plant-based diet with less than 10% of calories coming from fat each of the groups were eating a pretty healthy diet of their respective group like for example the keto diet group wasn't just eating a bunch of bacon and lard and coconut oil no they were eating a lot of vegetables with this too also, the people in the study were allowed to eat as much as they want, so there was no calorie restricting going on here. Another amazing thing about this study is it was like a controlled feeding trial. Basically, they just take a bunch of people, they lock them up in a hospital, they split them into two groups, have one do a high-fat animal-based diet, have one do a low-fat plant-based diet, and then at two weeks, they switch. That way, they can see if any of the results were flukes. Sometimes people call this a crossover trial. We could talk way more about study design, but let's just get right into some of the results. So one of the things you'll hear people on keto say is that producing a lot of ketones and eating a lot of fat and forcing your body to burn fat actually it suppresses your appetite per se. And even though the keto group did seem to be eating a lot less the second week, meaning their appetite was suppressed, get this, the plant-based group was still eating around 544 calories less per day. That is just crazy. But that's the power of foods that are very low in calories, high in fiber, and high in nutrients. The people in the study were told that this isn't a weight loss study. Even though it kind of was, they were measuring their weight, blindly of course. But the researchers went as far to say that the people in the study should constantly be wearing baggy clothing. That way they can't like look at themselves in the mirror and be like, Oh my gosh, I'm gaining weight! Oh, excuse me, doctor. I think Sonya over here should probably remove her tight and, uh, revealing clothing. Oh, but this is my favorite shirt. And wait, are you looking at my boobs? Obviously, I'm just kidding. That's probably not how it happened. Even though I kind of like to think so. All right, so next thing here, I think it's really important to point out that the plant-based group was actually eating significantly more volume of food. You see where I'm going with this? More food, 
for less calories. And let me reiterate, they were not calorie restricting. They could eat as much or as little as they wanted. And also surprisingly, there was no reported difference between the pleasantness or familiarity of either diet. They're just kind of like, eh, either one doesn't matter to me. And this really goes against the current narrative where people will say, you know, plant-based is so hard or it's really restrictive. Meanwhile, people will continue to choose to do the keto diet, somehow thinking that it's less restrictive and then eat like seven foods all day, every day. Ah uh, yes, uh, there, there are many diets we could use for weight loss. Uh, two of them that are very hip and happening right now are keto and uh, plant-based. Wait a second, bro. So you tell me I can eat anything I want as long as it's a plant or I can eat unlimited bacon? Bro, is that even a question? Sign me up for the bacon! Now, here's where this study really blows open the doors on this keto paradigm. Their whole idea of eating a plant-based diet being bad for weight loss because it spikes your insulin because it's too high in carbohydrates, well, this study doesn't support that at all. Well, actually, it kind of does. You see, the plant-based group did have higher blood sugar and insulin spikes after meals and fasting. But does that mean that they stored more fat? No, actually. You see, the keto diet lost more weight initially, but most of that weight was fat-free mass, things like water weight. Whereas the plant-based group seemed to have a more steady decrease in fat stores. So long story short, the plant-based diet, much better for fat loss, even though these people were eating as much as they wanted. And this is in line with lots of other studies and really the scientific consensus here. Lastly here, and this is amazing by the way, the animal-based keto diet actually had impaired glucose tolerance compared to the plant-based group. Even though they had lower blood sugar and insulin levels, you know, because they're not eating much that turns to sugar, their glucose tolerance was actually going down, which is exactly the opposite of what keto people want diabetics to believe. You know, this whole paradigm of people with diabetes going on the keto diet to improve their glucose tolerance I don't know where it came from because they're not improving their glucose tolerance, you know, they're just not eating anything that turns to sugar and they're saying, oh my gosh, I feel so much better because obviously you kind of just covered up the problem. And this is consistent with other studies as well. There have been some randomized control trials showing that you can essentially reverse diabetes on a whole foods plant-based diet rich in carbohydrates. Like, pfft, what? But it's totally true, and it's for this reason that the American Diabetes Association has actually been talking about preparing to prescribe plant-based diets for diabetes treatments. That's amazing! Also, the keto group had an increase in LDL cholesterol, which is your quote-unquote bad cholesterol. You know, that's not good, but it's definitely not a surprise considering that, you know, they're eating a ton of cholesterol. It's probably gonna go up. So overall, basically the plant-based group is getting more fat loss with just as much satiety, they're lowering their cholesterol levels, they're improving their glucose tolerance, and all these other things. This is probably the best and most comprehensive study we've ever had on a topic like this. And it's, you know, it's really nice to see the paradigm shifting to where people see that, you know, hey, maybe carbs don't make you fat, or hey, maybe they don't make you diabetic. So I'm anticipating a lot of pushback from the keto people on this one. Let me know what you think their responses are going to be. I mean, it's a pretty darn convincing study, uh, but let's talk about it in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought about this. I love reading your comments. You know, I read every single one of them. This is a little different video than usual. I usually don't like report on new studies and I kind of just threw this together as quick as I could because I wanted to talk about it. I thought it was groundbreaking and cool enough that it deserved talking about. So if you enjoyed this video and think more people ought to hear this type of thing, go ahead and share this video as well as like, comment, and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to make sure you never miss a video. That helps my channel out a ton. All right, and with that, I will see you guys very, very soon. And God bless y'all.